the liturgical pig, and today it's All Saints Sunday. Yeah, aren't you excited? Ha ha. Good morning. I'm Pastor Laura Gentry, and this is Hymnal. We are delighted to welcome you to worship today. Since it's All Saints Sunday, our interim bishop, Andrea DeGroote Nelson, and her entire staff have put together a worship service that we as an entire synod can enjoy together. So without further ado, we present to you the All Saints Sunday service for the Northeast Iowa Synod. May God bless our time together. <laughs> be with you. I want to welcome you to our All Saints Day worship of music and prayers and word uh, by the Northeast Iowa Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. We invite you to um, make yourself comfortable and prepare for worship. You might want to have a candle with you and there'll be an opportunity to light that candle in memory of someone um, that you have lost this year or, or any time to remember. One thing that All Saints does is remind us that the Holy Spirit unites us with the saints of all times and all places. So that not only are we united with those who have gone before us, those we have known and who we have loved, and even those we have not known but whose paths we follow, we are united by the Holy Spirit with all the saints, with our friends and our family and our fellow uh, congregation members, even if we are not sitting in the same pew with them. So I hope this worship, we hope this worship is a blessing to you. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also let it lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. For all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed, thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Ah, God of all mercy and the God of all consolation, comfort us in all our sorrows so that we may comfort others in their sorrows with the consolation we ourselves have received from God. When we were baptized in Christ Jesus, we were baptized into his death. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death so that as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might live a new life. Oh, blessed communion, fellowship. 
worship divine, we feebly struggle, may in glory shine, yet all are one, in thee for all are thine, alleluia, And when the strife is fierce, the warfare long steals on the ear, the distant triumph song, and hearts are brave again, and arms are strong. Oh, alleluia. Alleluia. For if we've been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. The cold and evening brightens in the west, soon, soon to faithful servants come at rest. Sweet is the calm of paradise, the blessed. Alleluia, alleluia. But then there breaks a yet more glorious day. The same. Triumphant, rise in bright array, the King of glory passes on his way. Alleluia, Alleluia.
Into your hands we commend them, O merciful Savior, sheep of your own fold, lambs of your own flock, sinners of your own redeeming. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. From earth's wide bounds, from ocean's farthest poles, through gates of pearl stream in the countless woes, singing to God the sovereign Holy Ghost. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion in the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our first reading is from Revelations chapter 7, beginning with verse 9. The book of Revelations is written to seven churches in Western Asia Minor during a time of great oppression. Today's reading is a response to the question asked in chapter 7, verse 17, Who is able to stand? The writer gives the faithful the assurance of God's protection and a vision of victory. The reading. After this I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count, from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white, with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne, and around the elders, and the four living creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped God, singing, Amen, blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God for ever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are those robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, these are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship him day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more, thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd and he will guide them to springs of living water of life, and God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will bless the Lord at all times. The praise of God shall ever be in my mouth. I will glory in the Lord, let the lowly hear and rejoice. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Proclaim with me the greatness of the Lord. Let us exalt God's name together. I sought the Lord who answered me and delivered me from all my terrors. Look upon the Lord and be radiant, and let not your faces be ashamed. I called in my affliction, and the Lord heard me, and saved me from all my troubles. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. 
The angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear the Lord and delivers them. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are they who take refuge in God. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. The lions are in want and suffer hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack nothing that is good. O Lord, you redeem the life of your servants, and those who put their trust in you will not be punished. Fear the Lord, you saints of the Lord, for those who fear the Lord lack nothing. Us, ...that we should be called children of God, and that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children now. What and what we will be has not been yet revealed. What we do know is this. When we, he is revealed, we will be like him, for we will see him as he is. And all who have this hope in him purify themselves, just as he is pure. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hello, boys and girls. I'm so glad that you joined us for this video worship. I hope you had a really safe but really fun Halloween on the 31st. This is a really great weekend because there are, in fact, two holidays this weekend. Halloween on Saturday night, but today, Sunday morning, is another holiday we call All Saints Day. It's the day we commemorate all of the saints. Well, what's a saint? A saint is someone who tries to follow Jesus, be a disciple of Jesus, and is a model, a teacher to other people how to follow Jesus. I keep pictures of saints here in my office in Waverly. Let me show you a few. This is one of my favorites. It's of the first saint. This is Mary and a vision of how she might have taken care of Jesus. It's called Kissing the Face of God is the name of that. She's a first follower of Jesus and she cared for Jesus and she showed other people how to. Over here are three old guys. These guys lived about 500 years ago. The one holding a Bible, his name is Martin Luther. And the guy with the pointy beard, that's Philip Melanchthon. And this guy, is Johannes Bugenhagen, Martin Luther's best friend. These three guys worked together to form what we now know as the Lutheran Church. They were really excited about people can read the Bible and use the Bible to learn about how much Jesus loves us. That's what makes them saints. They're followers of Jesus and taught other people how to be a follower of Jesus. Let me show you some people who are a little bit more current. This is my family. They're also saints. They try to follow Jesus, and they, and especially my dad, taught me how to be a follower of Jesus. He was a great teacher. Now at your house, I bet you have at least one picture of a saint at your house. Where? It's hanging up in your bathroom. Just go to the bathroom, and right above the sink, you'll see a mirror. And when you look in it, you'll see a picture of a saint. You. You are also someone working hard to be a follower of Jesus who knows how much Jesus loves them and you can be an example to others, your peers and adults. You can teach them how to be a follower of Jesus too. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. We're all so glad we can be together, at least in this way.
The Holy Gospel appointed for this, the festival of all saints, is from Matthew, the fifth chapter, the first 12 verses. In the Beatitudes, Jesus provides a unique description of those who are blessed with God's favor. His teaching is surprising and shocking to those who seek wealth, fame, and control over others. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him. Then he began to speak and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven, for in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. The Gospel of the Lord. We're thinking about what Jesus means when he gives us these words about being blessed, blessed. You know, in our culture, being blessed has often come to mean that everything's going right for you, that you have everything you could ever want. You have success, you have um, money, you have power or position. Uh, in all of the circumstances, we might think, that's what success means. No matter what else is going on in our life, we have somehow been kept in a safe and um, profitable place. Really what Jesus says today in the Beatitudes in Matthew though, kind of uses blessed in a different way, doesn't he? It's a concept that Jesus turns on his head. Blessed, according to Jesus, is who you are, not what you have. It is who knows you, as in God knows you and knows us, but not who we know, as if knowing someone in a position of authority or power were uh, a way to be blessed. It's seeing that God loves us, no matter what befalls us, no matter where we are in our life experience, Jesus proclaims to us in the Beatitudes that God finds us and loves us. So think with me a little bit about just this year, right? Just 2020. How many times have we heard this litany of all the things that have happened in our world, in our countries, in our communities, sometimes in our very families? There is, of course, the pandemic. We hear about and know people who are living through hurricanes. We know people or hear about and reach out and help to those who have experienced huge fires in their areas. We know that our farmers and ag people are out harvesting, facing difficult situations, hoping for a better profit on the hard work they put into a crop. We know the economy has been rocky during this pandemic. And certainly, we know about death. People we love have died, people in our communities, people that we've heard about and who have become well known to us publicly have suffered in this year. We know about injustice. We've seen up close in videos and through the media about how unjust some of our people have been treated. So there's a lot that's gone wrong, right? There's a lot that we're living through, not unlike the list that Jesus gives in the Beatitudes about all the things that afflict people. And yet he calls us and them blessed. In many instances, we have been brought low by all of these events that have occurred that I just listed off and you could list more. We have not always behaved at our most saintly, correct? We haven't always let that best self come forward in our dealings because it's not normal times. And that's what crisis does. That's how fear and anxiety 
can rule us and take away what is the usual demeanor and behavior, our long-held values swept aside, our upbringing and our ability to see beyond ourselves to a bigger picture and a larger world that we're called to serve and love. We lose at times like these, our ability to feel compassionate and to extend both patience and exhibit persistence, perseverance in the face of adversity. All of these are hard things. All of them can bring out our worst selves all these long months. And yet, though those symptoms of dying as humans are all around us, Jesus is here. Jesus sees us, names us, claims us, calls us, calls us blessed, even when we don't feel it, and most certainly when we don't deserve it. Jesus calls us to joy in the midst of adversity. This text on All Saints Day this year may be a reminder of who we are in God's eyes, a helpful reminder that we are, as Luther liked to describe us, both saint and sinner. Well, the sinner part probably doesn't need further explanation. We are human. But the saint part, that comes from the gift of baptism. Through water and the word, God washes over his people and brings them through Christ to the gift of eternal life, to the promise of forgiveness, of new life even now, prior to our earthly death. And so we are called saints, both in this life and in our dying. On All Saints Day, here in this setting, we remember. We remember our loved ones who have died, especially those who have died in this last year. And we remember all who are the blessed dead, who have gone to spend eternity in the loving embrace of God, a home and a place we too look forward to at the end of our lives. I always think it's important on All Saints Day both to remember, but also to name those we love, to name them out loud. So I invite you right now, and in this context of standing in a cemetery as I am, to say out loud, to whisper, to say in your heart at least, the name of a loved one of yours who has died, maybe this year, maybe in previous years. Say that name out loud. Gary Allen Nesdall. My husband died four years ago. I still love hearing his name. Love that his name brings stories and memories to me and my family, to his friends, to a wide variety of people. That's true for the people you love as well. It's important to say their names, isn't it? To hear their names and know those stories live on. I've heard it described that we die three times. You die when your physical body dies. You die when you're buried in the ground. And you die the last time someone says your name. So on All Saints Day in our tradition, we lift up names and we call back memories. And we talk about legacy and lessons, values and belief that was held by those before us and that we now are privileged to carry forward, both as saints and in our human frailties as sinners. On All Saints Day, may this be a time for you to recall and remember, but also to reflect on what Jesus says in those Beatitudes, that we are blessed in spite of the adversity, in the midst of the difficulty, we are blessed and called upon to exhibit joy as a witness that God is with us. God's claim on us supersedes the claim of any other experience. And that is a claim of love, of forgiveness, and the promise of new life here and in the world to come. God bless you people as we together remember the saints and seek to live our saintliness in God's world. Amen. My life was an endless song above earth's lamentation. 
I catch the sweet though far off hymn that hails a new creation. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on earth, the world, and all in need. Lord of all the saints, we praise you for evangelists and martyrs, who sacrifice witness to your gospel across time and space. Inspire us by their courage to carry our faith to new peoples and places around us. Hear us, O God. 
your mercy is great. Lord of every nation, guide this country, red states and blue states, rural voters and urban voters, young and old, as we share in another national election. Kindle hearts eager to understand our common needs and seek our common good. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every blessing, your son's blessing came to those living with poverty, grief, hunger, thirst, and persecution. Shape our vision of the saints to match his own. Awaken in us your call to serve all who suffer. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every venture, anoint us with the missionary spirit of the early church. Bless all new missions of our synod, especially the little free food pantries and our disaster responses. Empower testimony from new communities of faith to share a diverse witness to your saving power. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Lord of every time, countless are the multitude you have called by name and gathered to yourself. Comfort us as we grieve those who have died in the past year. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Go in grace with a smile on your face. Thanks be to God. I'm the liturgical pig and I approved this service. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs>